Well, now to the breaking news of the past hour because the Rogers Cup final in Toronto certainly ended in a dramatic way. Candace Bianca Andrescu is this year's champion after tennis legend Serena Williams was forced to withdraw. Let's go right now to Rob Pizzo, who's at the site of the championship match. So, Rob, uh, really stunning end here. What happened? Yeah, not exactly the finish. Obviously, people wanted to see, tennis fans wanted to see, but it was pretty emotional nonetheless, Michael. I mean, with Bianca Andreescu up 3-1 in the first set, during the changeover, Serena Williams called a medical timeout, and it didn't take long to see that something was wrong. She became, became emotional, she started crying, and literally moments later, she told the official, I just can't do it, and had to withdraw. And that's when the emotion really kicked up a notch, because the 19-year-old Bianca Andreescu walked over and consoled the 23-time Grand Slam champion. Uh, gave her a hug, said everything was going to be okay, uh, and maybe lost in all that emotion, Michael, for a brief moment was the fact that, yes, she made history, the first Canadian to win this tournament in 50 years. Here's what she said on the court afterwards. Serena, you made me cry on the bench over there. Uh, I know how it is to pull out of tournaments and be injured, it's not easy and this wasn't the way I expected to win and for you to go off the court. But you are truly a champion. I've watched you play so many times. You are truly a champion on and off the court. I am speechless right now. I'm the first Canadian who got to the finals and has won this tournament since 1969. This has been a dream come true, really. So Bianca, obviously very aware of the history that she made today. And you know what? It was a withdrawal. But in the end, she is the Rogers Cup champion. Now, I've been talking to a lot of the fans here, Michael, uh, afterwards. And the one sentiment they all seem to have is they feel bad for Serena Williams. Yes, she's won more tournaments than you can even count. But this is not the way you want a tournament to end. She was emotional. She talked to the crowd afterwards, said she was sorry. She just couldn't go on. And you know what? You had to feel for that whole emotional exchange between the two. But like I said, either way you look at it, Bianca Andreescu, your Rogers Cup champion. Okay, Rob, thank you for that. Well, as we say thanks to Rob Pizzo, we do now want to invite to the program Tom Tebbit. He is a tennis writer for Tennis Canada, joins us right now on the phone from Montreal. So, Tom, thank you for joining us today. I want to begin, first and foremost, your reaction. Certainly not the ending people were expecting today. Well, of course not, no, but I, I think a lot of people thought it was a 50-50 match. Bianca's been playing that well lately, so it's, it's not a surprise that she's a champion. It didn't happen the way, obviously, all of us would like to have had it happen. But in a funny way, actually, she won five matches this week because Serena had a bye in the first round. Serena only won four, so kind of a phony way to look at it. But uh, she's been great all week. She's come out of all kinds of crazy, tough situations. So a deserving champion, but not the way we'd like to see it happen. Deserving, as you say, in part because, you know, he she was already battling a shoulder injury, and then she comes uh, to Toronto to play in this championship. And here she is all bandaged up the last couple of games. Talk to us about the injuries that she sustained and about her fortitude as an athlete to be able to overcome all that. Well, in 2016, actually, she missed six months with a, a stress fracture in her foot. And in 17 and 18, she had back problems, which definitely limited her. Who knows where she could be by now? She obviously had like a sort of a groin and an upper leg injury on one leg, a little bit of something. Leg, uh, one or two matches looked like who knows if she could carry on. But she just has incredible fighting spirit. It was just amazing that tough time she came through. She beat the world number five and the world number three uh, on the way to the, getting to the final and, and came out of poor all in the final set. Both times she, you know, went on from there to win. So it's just amazing. I don't know. Maybe it's you know helps being 19 years old or, or whatever. But it's just uh, her, her willpower is very exceptional. Exceptional willpower, as you say. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Serena Williams, though. She essentially uh, retired from the match 19 minutes into the game. Uh, what type of injury might she have sustained? Do you think? Well, it's an upper back problem, like maybe spasms or something. I, I'm not that familiar with her. She's had knee problems. She has a chronic knee problem, doesn't have too much cartilage in one knee. But uh, upper back, I think it maybe has happened before, but it's not something we associate with her. So obviously she felt it and she knows she can't go on. I thought it was really terrific of Bianca, the way she went over and consoled her. It seemed very genuine. 
she's had her back problems herself. She said that to Sabrina and the way they hugged, the way they sort of communicated in a very difficult moment says a lot about the kind of person Bianca is. Yeah, well, certainly it was a very poignant moment uh, soon after that dramatic end to the match. Uh, let's talk a bit about the historic moment that we are experiencing here because uh, this is, again, the first time a Canadian has won what used to be called the Canadian Open in 50 years, the last champion back in 1969. How important is this for tennis in Canada? Well, it's really important, obviously. Uh, I mean, in 1969, it was a much folksier tournament, mostly Canadian players only. Um, so it was really a different time. This is the real deal. Uh, I mean, these are all the best players in the world. Serena was there. Simona Halep was there. Osaka was there. So for her to come out and win a tournament like this is totally different than 50 years ago. I'm an old geezer, but I won't pretend there was anything like this back 50 years ago. So it, it's a great win. It's very inspiring, hopefully, for a new generation of women players, girl players. And, and Bianca is just uh, the other thing about her. I think everybody's been saying it. She's such a fun player to watch. She has so much variety in her game. She can do everything. So you're not just seeing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. She does all kinds of stuff that really sort of changes things up and makes it fascinating to watch. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many young uh, people are inspired by her play. You know, as we talk about Bianca, though, of course, the next uh, big one is the U.S. Open. How does this set her up going into New York? Well, she's actually number 14 in the world now, and that's after only playing uh, eight tournaments this year. So, I mean, that's incredible that she's there. She could actually end up in the final eight, which is the, the championships in Shenzhen, China. Uh, that's in uh, October. So, I mean, that would be amazing if she can make it that far. Uh, but going to the U.S. Open, I, mean, uh, I think we'll have to wait and see whether she plays Cincinnati next week with all the bandages and everything. might be prudent of her to skip that because she seems to be in fine shape now. So, I think she goes into the U.S. Open as one of the top five or six favorites, no question about it.